I spend more hours than I'd like to admit in Google Docs. Last week, with all the announcements that OpenAI made, one of the announcements that didn't get as much publicity was its integration with Google Docs for Plus users. This major upgrade has the potential to allow us to collaborate more easily with ChatGPT in our day-to-day -day workflow. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect Google Docs to ChatGPT, and then I'm gonna share five practical use cases that we can use as creators and brand builders. I'll be sharing some specific examples to directly from my businesses where this GPT 4.0 Google Docs integration might just change the game. I'm David Dundas. I'm the COO of Brand YGN and I run an agency where we connect creators with brands. I'm here to help you get paid to do more of the things you love. Hit the subscribe button if you're into that. Let's jump into my laptop. When you log into ChatGPT, what you'll now see when you try to upload a file is a few different menu items. So you'll see upload to computer, which is what we had before. You'll see a connect to Google Drive, and then you'll see connect to Microsoft OneDrive. And obviously for this video, we're just going to be focused on Google Drive. So click on connect to Google. Now you're connected. You'll see this notification. Say you don't want ChatGPT to any longer have access to your drive, or say you want to connect a different account. You go over here to your icon up here, and then you go to connected apps, and then you can disconnect it and then you're uh, disconnected. It's pretty simple to get uh, started. Now what we'll do is we'll just reconnect it really quickly. Let's talk about the first use case, creating content. If you're a creator or if you're a marketer, you probably have content that you're creating on an ongoing basis. And if you don't use Notion or Monday.com, you're probably using Google Sheet. Why don't we just jump into this use case that could be really interesting. It's creating visuals for a blog post or for a video based on text that we've already added to a spreadsheet. We'll go to the upload section. We'll go to add from Google Drive and we'll go into open AI examples. And let's go to what is AI art visuals. So this is essentially a shot list for a video. We want to just create the image itself. We can add this to chat GPT. We've added this as an attachment to our chat. We can say review the spreadsheet and based on the visuals, use Dolly to create the corresponding image for each row. And let's see what it does. So it's gonna go through and it's going to take each image prompt and then it's gonna to try to generate the corresponding image. And then it asks, do you want to proceed with the next set of prompts? And so you can say yes. And then you could say, you add these generated images to the spreadsheet in a new column. And so this actually won't work. It uploaded them locally. So you'll still have to download them and then add them to the spreadsheet or upload them to your Google Drive. But this is pretty cool because you could go through and generate images based on this spreadsheet. So if you think these images are cool and how this works is cool, hit the like button and, and we'll move on to the next example. Example number two, YGN is in over 600 Target stores and over a thousand CVS stores around the country. We want to create a marketing plan to support the stores where we have the largest density of customers. What we would do is we would go to Shopify, we'd export our customer data, and then we're going to take the list of stores that we got from our partner and then upload them and determine where we should focus our marketing efforts. We have two spreadsheets here. The first one is YGN sales. And the second one is the YGN target store list. And so then we could say based on the YGN sales spreadsheet, analyze the data and suggest where we should focus our marketing efforts to support our target retail locations. Share your rationale for your suggestions. This is orders for a specific month in the past based on city. And then we have the city list of where the stores are. It then goes through and it will suggest the stores in the marketing where we should be focused. So uh, Brooklyn, so super cool. Identify the target stores in Brooklyn and marketing efforts, Chicago, Atlanta, and Houston, and LA. And so these are the stores. So what we would do is we wanna kind of come up with marketing plans based on where our customers actually are today and uh, focused on uh, these stores. 
hours. That's example number two of something that I do on a daily basis. Now I can just work with ChatGPT to do it. The next one is maybe a little bit niche depending on who you are watching this. But if you're a brand that runs Facebook advertising, what you always are asking yourself is, is this advertising spend that we have, is it profitable or not? I wanna show this one example of asking ChatGPT, should you spend more or should you spend less? So I'm just gonna share the spreadsheet with ChatGPT. And so this is a revenues from years ago. It's not sensitive. So why don't we jump in, look at the spreadsheet for our advertising and order data and suggest how our media has performed. And so what I'll show you is that this is essentially, it's just a spreadsheet where we have these different columns of new customers, ALV, blah, 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 repeat orders, new orders, all those types of things. And then a CAC is the most important thing is your customer acquisition cost and how much we spent to acquire the customers. What you don't want to do is you don't want to spend more than you can afford to acquire new customers on a daily basis. It gives us breakdown of the data itself. It's pretty generic. So we maybe can go a little deeper. But what I want to do is look at the look at the correlation between our spend, our CAC, and our revenue. For every dollar do we spend, are we making more than a dollar back? Let's just say, can you correlate uh, daily spend, CAC, and top line revenue? Are there points where it is no longer profitable to spend more? What daily spend should we stop. And so what it does is it looks at correlation. There's a high, strong correlation. When you increase your spend, your cost to acquire a new customer goes up. So it gets more expensive to acquire customers. So it makes it less efficient. And then there is a positive correlation with spend and revenue, but it's not that strong. What this is saying is that there is probably a point where if we continue to spend, we'll no longer see any new revenue. So it's not profitable. And so there it gives us a breakdown analysis. And then and if we scroll all the way down, I asked, okay, so at what point should we just stop spending? So don't spend any more than $1,735 a day. This is awesome. Before you needed an analyst to do this work. Now, if you know the right questions to ask ChatGPT and you have the data, then it can answer it for you. Love this one. The next one is recently we updated our website for Hello Combo. And so what we did was we pulled together some of the best performing creative and so we have this top ad creative. So what I want to do is I want to turn each one of these into page that we can add to our website. This is just a brief note and angle and how we got the content. I want to have ChatGPT write the copy for me for each one of these pages. So what we're going to do is add to Google Drive. Again, OpenAI examples, top ad creative. Now we're gonna ask it, review the spreadsheet. It's an example of client content and our process for generating ads. Create a full SEO optimized page of 800 to 1000 words describing our process and the type of ad creative. This will be used as uh, the our work pages on hello combo.com. So let's see what it does. We have some content and now we can ask it to do a couple more things. Now for each generate a SEO optimized meta description title and slug for each row and add these new columns to the spreadsheet. Now we have this new spreadsheet and it has a slug, the title the description. It didn't add the new content. Let's go back and please update this with the new content, new page content you wrote in a corresponding column. Okay. So now it has the page content that it wrote and along with the slug, the meta description, the title. So a super cool, you know, team kind of like giving the bones and the inspiration for the content. Of course, we'll have to go back and we'll have to review this content. We may want to give it a little bit more of our brand voice. It allows us to turn our work into something that people can see on the internet. So that's awesome. And the last example is for if you're a YouTuber or you're a content creator, the, what I wanted to do was look at the performance of my content on my YouTube channel and see 
see what content ChatGPT thinks I should be creating next. Let's go back into the drive. Let's go into YouTube videos. Let's say analyze my past YouTube videos and give me new ideas for content I should focus on that my community will want to see. This does a little bit of analysis. So it says, okay, these are the top performing videos and then it looks at engagement metrics. Um, so AI tools, which is, you know, this is what we're doing right now. The, and it looks at the click-through rate. So this has a you know high click-through rate for this video. Other categories, content around tech, personal experiences, financial losses, and just being real. I think that I already try to do that. And so here are some ideas, advanced tips and tricks. True story is that I actually didn't use this before I uh, tested out this video. So this supports this video that you're watching right now, personal stories and those types of things. So totally helpful for this. Say you've already have a script for a video and you want to brainstorm um, your title and your description. Um, you can do that as well. So why don't we go to Google Drive? And let's add this script here. So based on my past top performing videos, analyze the titles and give me three new variations based on what performed well in the past. So it uses, it analyzed my top performing videos and it kind of gives a rationale for what it suggested. So I think this is super interesting and it, you know, it just helps you brainstorm. Again, you're not just asking, uh, you know, ChatGPT to do the work for you. You're coming with an idea and you're collaborating with ChatGPT to get the right idea and inform it potentially with data and other things. I love this feature and I think there's a ton of potential here. Hopefully these examples were useful for you guys. If you have any questions about other ways you can use it or if you have use cases for how you use it, comment below. If this video was helpful for you, hit the like button so more people can see it. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. David Dundas signing off, peace.